Well, what's up, people? It's another special episode of the Sincerely Your Crowd podcast, and we are here to deliver. Yes. My name is Joseph N.T. If you're seeing me for the first time, learn about me, Google me, read about me. <laughs> yeah, host of the Sincerely Your Crowd podcast, brought to you kind courtesy of the Gold Coast Report. That's the GCR Network, premier podcasting network here. I call if I don't know how to say North Southwest. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to say. Anyway, I also shout out to Mr. Santi as my co-creator and producer, Mr. Kwame Santi Ofori. Yeah. Now listen, we've got a really special, you know, interview that we are doing. We are adding to this very interesting uh, podcast episode. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, 10 years in anything is not a mean thing. 10 years in anything. Why you be one, two, three, 10 years. 10 years ago, where were you? 10 years ago, where were you? Well, 10 years ago. The mask DJ was just a now or, or Kenyan who saw best set to see anymore as you know. The first way I have to read this one no, electronic dance, no, <laughs> electronic <laughs> dance African music, no, electronic dance and African music, electronic dance and African music. Let me visit my comprehension and ask you know <laughs> how when you're in school. And you you have a lot of words describing something. One like a black, fat, short, white, like something comes before. I I yeah. But anyway, guys, today we're going to be talking. Can I mention your government's name? Yeah, <laughs> we're, going <to> be, <laughs> we're, we're going to be talking to Michelle Nanajwa Ejakuma Yebua of Asempa House Abugis. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know oh, the research is always clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who, that's also also known as the masked DJ. Yes. What's up? How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. I How really, are you? I'm great. I really like this mask today. Thank you. You were telling thank me you. the person who painted it. What's what's the person's name? The female painter. The female painter. Oh, yeah. Ninsano Kama. Yeah. It, these the masks that you wear are they customized to your face? No, this is it's actually plain, and then after they design it, but it's because I've been wearing it for ten years. So now, whenever you look at it, you think of me. But no, because you know what the shape, like the 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 nose and yeah. everything. That's the only way you know. Yeah, typical <laughs> masks like this, they are not very defined. Yeah, is it like if I hit is it, is it solid or you can it, you can try? What's that? Okay. <laughs> and the plastic. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. All right. <laughs> no, so I've known, I mean, for those of you who don't know, um, the magic, I've known her since like 2016, 2017 era, yeah. the hot era in, in nightlife. And I knew you as DJ Michi. Yes. So honestly speaking, when the whole mass DJ, not me, those days when when they see the mass DJ, I actually thought it was somebody else. Okay. I'm like, so why why did we change from <laughs> DJ Michi to the mass DJ? Um, I wanted to change because of the one, the music I was playing. Because in the beginning, I was playing everything like I always say. But then mm -hmm. I wanted to change and make it something more specific, which is electronic and African dance music. Okay. So that was one. And then secondly, I say this every time. People don't believe me, but I'm very, very shy. <laughs> very, very shy. Really? Yes, yeah, so I wanted to use the mask to hide. But now it's like, it's not even helping me hide because wherever I go, it's like, oh, Max DJ, Max DJ. Well, at least they don't see, you know, um, and this is something that I, I learned from, you know, COVID and then the face mask. Now you people don't see your micro expressions. Yes. And I love it so much because I do a lot of things when I'm playing. Yeah, like, right? Playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, when you say that you are shy, that's why you went for the mask. I want to ask, I, I feel like maybe it's only until recently that when you go to events, people pay attention to the DJ. And, and when I say pay attention, like look at the DJ. Yeah. You know, with the whole, um, what's the name of this DJ? The one, the... the Uncle Waffles. Uncle Waffles, like dancing, you know. Now, yeah. like people, DJing is no longer that thing where you do it in the corner and nobody really yeah, sees Yeah, it you. has to be. But when we were starting out, 2016, 2017, you know, now it wasn't four. like that. So when you say you are shy, are you shy of people looking at you? Or you are shy of like, when you go up there, like the people that are all around... Mm -hmm. One, yeah. So the people around, like the crew for the event, and then even the people I was playing for, I wanted it to serve like, like you know, like an alter ego kind of thing. So it's like I'm in my own um, world, yeah. Like those guys. Oh, you know, there's this, there's this like DJ guy. He got like an X and a smile. It's like marshmallow, he wears, marshmallow. marshmallow, marshmallow. Yeah, marshmallow. And then there's the two guys, the one that have like the mouse. There's this two. No, Daft Punk. Is it Daft Punk? Yeah, Daft Punk. Almost yeah. okay. So that's the vibe you are, you are going for. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know you got into DJing mostly because of your love for music. So I want to know, what kind of music were you listening to when you were growing up? I was listening to everything. Uh, hip everything. Life. Everything. Should we put it to the test? Hey, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Okay, what's but, the hip life and what else? 
um, uh, hip life, uh, high life. Like my mm. dad used to play a lot of reggae, so that day I was listening to it by force, not Ooh. like I wanted to, but I was okay. listening to it. Hey, oh, pirates, yes, okay. they're a pirate. I don't know the lyrics, I mean, you know, the redemption song. <laughs> oh, who knew the lyrics in the same? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, you you were listening to everything let's say it's it was more of whatever that was on radio then then i was ah. listening to radio a lot yeah and then once in a while my dstv kakra number this thing that you said about the radio yeah i i i heard that you used to record cassettes you yes. used to put a cassette yes. in the radio <laughs> yes. if a song is playing that you like then then you record yes. it yes yeah, there was a show on uh is it every moment free promo but there was a show on radio Oh, it was called not- Cruise Control then. Ah, okay. It's okay. me free school, but that's when I put in the cassette and then I record whatever the DJ was playing. Then later I get to listen to. Did you like the music? Like, was it a diverse genre music? No, Mubuana said it was a specific type of a. They, what I was recording mainly was uh, R&B and hip hop. Mm-hmm. The foreign one, because mm-hmm. I know mean, yeah, like I won't listen to it more. So those were the ones I was recording. Because the, I mean, Ghanaian music, you hear it everywhere. Metro TV uh-huh. play, advertising, cycling, you know that kind of thing. So I was listening to it because I didn't really have access to that kind of music. Honestly, let me tell you, when I found out that thing, I was like, hey, I did the same thing. That's how I learned Umbrella. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I had okay. a radio in my room, and then I also had like blank cassettes, and I'll put it in there, and I'll record Call it. So it. I always just hate it when like the song is playing, and they'll say, and the "You're listening speak. to exactly. Mr. Oh, why? I just want a clean recording." <laughs> That's I learned. And when I finish, I play the song, then I'll pause, then I'll write the lyrics. No, exactly. You will have my heart. <laughs> yeah. Pause. Play. You didn't buy the book. There was oh no, no, no. Do you know why? There was grammatical errors. Anyway, it's true. Some of the lyrics, they used to change the lyrics. lyrics. Exactly. You know, originality. <laughs> so I went to the source. <laughs> you know, the source myself. Okay, so how did you get like into electric and dance music? Like, yeah. was it from back when you used to, used to listen to music? Or no, no, no. I, I grew up before. I, I started uh, liking electronic. Or I realized I liked it when I was in uni. So I was listening to that a lot in uni. So when I learned how to DJ, I wasn't even playing electronic music. I was playing everything, but I was personally listening to electronic music at mm. home for myself. But I was like, no, if I'm listening to it and I like it, definitely there will be people who also like it. Because mm. when you are going out at that time, you weren't hearing a lot of that. So I'm like, let me start playing it small, small and see what happens. And that's what's more turned into something now there are a lot of collectives a lot of events that play and the vice president of america knows who you are oh yes and that's on period that's <laughs> on period. <laughs> no but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say that's quite bold because yeah. you're playing everything you know how Ghanaians are when we go to events everybody's very intentional about what they want the dj to play so you discover electronic and dance music and then you decide that this is what you're going to make your sound I suffered, though. especially because <laughs> you were playing like a regular dj and everything yeah and also quick segue because i talk a lot i'm sorry but um dj kev of blessed memory yes i remember when he first came to a chassis right and he said he was a dj every time he would play he wouldn't play like the popular songs that we, we knew. know yes and i yeah. could always tell he was having fun he would play all yeah. these like experimental records and then people would just be like ah this guy so when i think about you choosing yeah the like, first time i met him at republic and then i played a set he played a set we just we just marched that they were like yeah i understand what you are doing and, and since then we we had a beautiful relationship till mm. he passed because we knew what, what we were doing was similar we had a vibe that we wanted to introduce in Accra and it worked. It's so sad. He's not here anymore to witness it. But right. whatever we're enjoying here, Kev played a major role in it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Because I remember back then, Republic, they used to Republic, have like a, yes. a set, like the four of them. Yeah, IFKR. Yeah, IFKR uh, with yeah. F, the DJ and everything. Yes. Oh, yes, see. yes, yes, yes. So would you say they also kind of like spared yes, you on? Yes, After yes, you yes. chose that, that field of like, or that kind of music. It helped because then it looked like, okay, I'm not on this journey alone because there are mm. people who also like what I'm doing. So it made it easier. So then that way we were doing events or we were having bookings that were similar. So we used to do this event at Republic, like you were saying. Yeah. And um, I remember I brought them to that time X Live Radio it was it was online. But I was like, look, we can have this platform. There aren't enough shows on it. So you guys can come because I'm doing it alone. But X the more Live. we do it, yeah. Is that Hebert Hebe- 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 please? Yes. Oh, so it was you. Yes. You know we had a radio show. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yes. And I was on that yes, show. Yes, the first night you guys came out. I said, let's do it. Guys, let me tell you. I honestly say this all the time. <laughs> DJ Kev is one of the people that like I I say big ups to because he called me up and he said, we're doing a show. We want somebody to do Hot Topics. Yes. I said, ah, Kevin, me and I said, you can't do it. 
Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. We did that show for almost like two or three years. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so I know you got into DJing by just playing around virtual DJ whilst you're in university. You've done your research, <laughs> with, your, with your best friend. <laughs> but I'm yes. curious, when you guys set out to do, I know she doesn't DJ anymore, but when you guys set out to DJ, what was the mindset? How far did you think you were going to go? Because I also know that after university, where you were learning sociology. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, like, why were you learning sociology? What was the plan no, that for was, sociology? That was, the, that was what the school gave me. I wanted to do business administration, but I didn't get that. So they gave me sociology. So I was doing sociology like to pass time. But when I was doing sociology too, I signed up for um, ICA. So I was doing ICA on the side. Yes. But I didn't finish ICA because then the DJing kicked off and all my attention right move to the dj so right now that's my workout plan if today decided to be a dj you go go back back to accounting it's my student now (laughs) for those of you who don't know ica is institute of chartered accounting accounting, yeah okay so yeah so no when you set up did you think it was going to be something that you'd be in for a while or it was just like useful exuberance oh useful exuberance so after the time i learned how to dj i never thought i was even going to be a dj it was I've learned it. Okay, that's it. But I didn't think it was going to be this. But then the more I practiced in the room with my best friend, like you said, and then the other, there was this room opposite us. The girls used to come to our room just to come and dance because, I mean, they said, you DJ were playing, playing and music. Do- oh, okay. So then it looked like we can do something with this. So the plan was to go as far as uh, we could go. And you mentioned Marshmallow and all these guys. Uh, those guys are like my influences. I was watching them a lot and I saw mm-hmm. the stages that they were on. They were playing So on. yeah, I was like, nah, I have to do this. Even if I don't get to do it outside, I wish you it would come to Accra. So I was really happy when the first boiler room was actually in Accra because it, it looked far fetched. I used to tell my best friend, look, we are going to Europe. We are going to Europe. Then, you know, and I, I found a tweet from my Twitter the other time where I said, I want to play Coachella, Boiler Room, and then Ultra Music Festival. And I've done Boiler Room. So it's left with it. <laughs> Everything is coming up. Yeah, I mean, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. You know, it's I remember coming. when I saw that video and Kamala like stopped to talk to you and everything. And I was like, who? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's possible. It's very possible now. Yeah, it's going to happen. Possible. Yeah, it's going to happen. Wow. So honestly, I know, you know, you start doing DJing, you believe in yourself. When did you recognize that you were a big deal? Um, Because I know it can take a while. Sometimes people yeah, see it before while. you see it. Yes. Um, I think 2019, around August. Mm. I don't even know what happened. Big Ben, I'll come and who said I don't know, but it was just this weekend and I had seven bookings. And out of the seven bookings, one was from... Like the person who booked me lives in Nigeria, but then the event was here. So I'm like, okay. And then that same year too, I had, I hadn't played any festival in Accra before, but someone from Nigeria had booked me to come play his event, which was Giddy Fest. So I played Giddy Fest that April. And then that year started to look like, okay. And then I did, um, uh, that weekend, that particular weekend in August. And I'm like, wait, seven bookings in one weekend. Like, go on, you're highly booked. Uh, highly, <laughs> highly requested. <laughs> sort I remember after. I posted it on Twitter and everyone was like, hey, book them busy. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And then I think it was that same year, um, uh, we did, uh, what do you call it? Was it the COVID year was 2020? 2020, yes. Yes, March. I think 2019, we did um, um, Major Laser. And these are like my idols. So someone calls me one day. I, someone I know and said, are you available on, th- on this date? And I said, yeah. But the first thing they didn't tell me what it was for. Of course. Some so, the end uh, end yeah. End. So me, we ended the conversation. <laughs> then a few days later, I saw on Twitter, or I think it was Instagram, the flyer for Major Laser in Accra. And it was the same date. So I remember that Sunday, I was in the house with a couple of my friends and I just started screaming. I'm like, guys, I think I'm opening for Major Laser, but I don't know if... So I just texted the person and I said, the gig you're asking for, is it for Major Laser? And then she goes like, yeah, I didn't want to tell you. We wanted to surprise you. I'm wow. like, oh, daddy, Lord, average. <laughs> Were you able to interact with them? No, no, no. But I spoke to Diplo briefly and then we took a picture. So it was oh. after that one. And then I think COVID happened. Then after COVID, I got to DJ for Ari Lennox as well. Ooh, and I met Ari Lennox on the beach. She's yeah, she's nice. But I must ask you because I, <laughs> is DJing paying you well? And I know it's obviously pays. Yeah, is it paying you well? Who's me to see dying? Yeah, I Um it's it's more I was telling someone recently that sometimes you get a gig that doesn't pay you so well. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes you get one that pays you so well. So then you use that one to offset. But if you are looking at I think it depends. It depends. It depends. But right now I can say I'm okay. I'm mm. okay. 
how do you go about like so for example when somebody books you right how do you guys go mm-hmm. about it is it like an hourly thing or like how how do your work so that's when i was go? naive <laughs> before come and say okay we do three hours and then this is our amount it's fixed but now that the brand has grown beyond michi you speak to my manager, she tells you all that she needs to tell you, and then you decide. But the thing is, if you're booking me for more hours, then at least it comes down a bit, because we have an hourly rate. But if you're doing, let's say, two hours, mm-hmm. then you get a little discount of it. If it's three hours, you get a little bit okay. of discount. But yeah, now we are trying to do the hourly rate more, because that makes sense. The three hours for that amount there, a lot of people take their piss in this yeah. city. And they don't start early. They don't start so early. So even though you are there for more than three hours. Exactly. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, hmm. I not starting early days. It applies everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, mm-hmm. so um, in your 10-year career, which stages have you performed at? Or was it, what are some of the events, stages that you've performed at that have elevated your CV? Okay. Um, I did... Uh, so like I said, I did Giddy first one. Mm-hmm. And then I've done Afrochella, I think, three or four times in a row. Right. Yeah. Then I did Afro Nation as well when they were here. Oh, really? And yes. Wow. And until we... we, uh, we I, lost know, I don't want to say cancel, but when Chalewate oh. Street I was still happening. Ah, you... S- okay. I did oh, yeah, Chalewate yeah, yeah. like about five Chalewate or six S- years yeah. back to back. And then uh, what else? Boiler Room. Oh, I've de- yeah, Boiler Room. Mm-hmm. I've DJed for um, uh, Off-White and TikTok. Um and then I've been for Spotify alone like about three times. And then Did you ever yeah. meet Virgil? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, I never I never met Virgil. Wow. But yeah. I know you've mentioned DJ MJ and DJ Kes as yeah. two women in the industry that like you are friends with and everything. Um how would you say the industry has been to women? You know, because it's very male dominated. Um, even when it comes to, for example, artists, you know how every artist has their DJ. I think Kitty is Viroski. Yeah. You know, I haven't seen any artist that has their DJ being a woman. A woman, yeah. Right? But I know there's a lot, apart from Kess and MJ, I know uh, Miss Austin, right? How would you say the industry has been for women, you know? It's been better. Because when I started 10 years ago, I knew only Kess and mj and then later i got to meet austin and a couple of other people who don't even dj anymore but now there are a lot of women djs really? a lot yes so who are some of the new people because honestly speaking apart from the names i mentioned i don't know anybody by name oh there is dr uh 808 uh there is um sleepy girl there is gh boy there is she's Mish. called gh boy yes oh okay. yeah gh boy and then there's dj mish there's uh there's chichi uh, there, are, there are a couple of women DJs. A lot. Of, the names are not coming, but all right, all right, lot, yeah. yeah. So no, but j- like back to the question. <laughs> Generally, <laughs> I mean, I know that like it's better now, but when I say how has the industry been like in terms of reception when you show up at an event, if you are playing with uh, male colleagues, the kind of reception you get when you are up on stage, yeah. backstage, what is all of that like? I think first it, it was it was weird, like. It was it was some way because it felt like he didn't belong there. But I think as time went on and then everyone has done what they can do for their own brands. Mm. It we've come to the point where people are like, okay, yeah, now you can have only women on the lineup and they will still kill it, or you can have a fine balance of both women and men on the lineup. But first, they yeah, it's like they used to sprinkle the women yeah. on the lineup, but now it's a seasoning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's like okay okay we can give chance to the women yeah yeah i want to talk about some of the things that you do i know you have a show on oroko Oro- 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 radio, radio. yeah, yeah it's, can you talk a bit about that yeah so it's called sounds it's basically dance music from around the world but mainly africa and it happens uh once a month so friday five to six so it's even happening now so just for the people who don't know what is oroko radio and how can uh, people it's listen? a it's a non-profit independent radio station founded by two uh european okay well they're not even european so it's one Ghanaian and then one nigerian but Mm -hmm. half german Mm. yeah so they created it to give a platform to other djs around the world and that was one of the first people they asked to be on it and i was like oh yeah that's interesting because both of them are my friends and we've been doing it for the past two so it's online radio for dj sets not even just DJs. If you have a show... Oh, they have show, actual yeah, yeah, shows you have, as well? Yeah, they have people who have oh. different... Because like, I feel like every one I have seen that has said, oh, watch my... Uh, catch my DJ. Oroko show, the DJ. No, uh, no, no. There are other shows. Other oh. amazing shows on there. Yeah, oh, that get in there. That caters to like different things. Hey, so if I have a show and I pitch to them, would they give me space? We are looking for people. <gasps> I think they normally announce in uh, January. So immediately they announce, I'll let you know. Don't out. <laughs> Let's get into there. Okay. Also, <laughs> what's Open House Accra? 
Open House Accra. So I created Open House Accra to serve as a platform for all the DJs that were mainly doing electronic music stuff. Mm. So it was supposed to be once a month. We come together, open decks. It's our house. And then we play house music. So that was basically how we got the name Open House Accra. Oh, is there an audience or is it just you guys playing? Oh, there's an audience. There's oh. an audience. Yeah, and these we, are the we've done it twice. Invite people to yes, come. yes, yes. We invite people. We have mm-hmm. we had a studio in East Legon where we used to shoot at. But currently it's unavailable. They are still working on it. So when it comes back, then we come back again. Mm-hmm. I do this thing where, where I when I go out and like music is playing, I do a quick scan just to see who is vibing with the song as much as i do yeah as djs do you pay attention to the crowd's energy because every time that i've looked up at a dj they are like busy it's like they're now trying to select the next thing or whatever and sometimes i wonder if they can tell that okay and your name finds your own sister yeah 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 do you it's, look it's around just, it's a quick check like because mm-hmm. you have to quickly come back to what you're doing but yeah we do check me i check eh. yeah so what's the sign of, of like people are not listening it depends. So sometimes um, people are sitting down quietly, mm-hmm. but they are enjoying the music. And sometimes you can see they are bored to death. So when you look at their body <laughs> language, <laughs> you look at their body language, you can tell if, if they like yeah. it or not. Because sometimes the fact that they are sitting there quietly doesn't mean they are not enjoying it. They mm-hmm. are just not up. And they're not, yeah, yeah. But they're like bopping and then they're just... Yeah. Singing. And sometimes it's mood music. Yeah, it's mood music. Uh-huh. It's not really... Do you, do you th- would you say you, your sets that you play fa- can facilitate a rave? Oh, yes. Because it looks yes. like... Yes, 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 yes. I see. Yes. Oh, okay. Also, what is Where Are the Women? Where Are the Women is, is for another amazing Ghanaian woman called Karina. Mm-hmm. Um, she created Where Are the Women to support women creatives, do things that benefit the creative industry when it mm-hmm. comes to women. So Where Are the Women is the reason why we have the pop-up DJ school we do with Pioneer Radio, okay. which we're announcing the second one this year for November. So it'll be from the end of November to December. So I help Karina teach the people who sign up to be DJs. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. So there, is there like a lot of girls in the class? Yes, who are we, we in choose the, oh. more girls than guys, actually, because mm. it's for that. Oh, I see. I see. And I discovered that you have a record featuring Sechua, Sechua, yeah. La Daddy. La Daddy. La Daddy. Daddy. Yes. So are you going to get into like more music? Oh, yes. We have, we have like this year, that's the plan. I've DJ for 10 years. I'm tired. I was telling someone I should think of it. <laughs> hey. But the main thing, like you see when you've done something for so long, you are used to it. So mm-hmm. my new challenge, Maybe especially from this You've year. not played Ultra. Oh, no, I'm not retired. I'm not retired. You've not played Coachella. No. Yeah, I have to do yeah. all those things. So this year we are doing, I mean, the year has already ended, but that's what we are working on. I have something nice coming with uh, Anansi and official mm. Kwame and you guys will love yes mm. you guys will love it oh, we are thinking cool. of dropping in December we might drop in December oh yeah this is what I want to see yeah <laughs> <laughs> I know that's what Kwame's gonna, gonna do <laughs> it was fun the studio session was oh, late yeah man. Kwame's a vibe I mean I know Kwame but seeing Kwame also working yeah was different and I really enjoyed it. And we've been planning on doing this for a while. So there are more records going to come from us with Kwame. Mm. Seems like a natural progression, you know, yeah. like, cause I realized a lot of DJs, even the non-electronic dance DJs, they have records yeah. with the, you know, mainstream artists and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So it'll be nice to see. All right. So for my last question, my producer Kwame always says that Ghanaians are music snobs. And that is why we don't give an opportunity for a, a variety of genres. Yeah. It's like, it's always going to be high life, high life, hip life, high life. And then, oh, now Afrobeats is everywhere. Okay. Let's do Afrobeats. Afro and then now I'm a piano comes and now they're even seeing their side of I'm a piano. Yeah. And it's the same way people don't give, like, they'll say, mm, uns, uns music me. I don't like uns, uns me. Ghanaians are music snobs. Do you think that is changing? Are are we becoming more receptive to different styles? Because you're playing these very different sets and yeah, you're yeah. packing rooms, yeah. you know? And people are like, when you see the the um, the journey of iMula sound system and stuff like that, you're seeing people are now getting into uns, uns music. What would you say the future for those kind of sounds is like here in Ghana? Is uh, it, looks, it looks good. But it's for a very selected group of people as well. Because even with I'm real, I realize that when I'm sitting in the crowd and I'm listening to what people saw, watching their reactions, you can see that it looks like, you can see them looking like, ah, okay, yeah, enough of the electronic. Can we get the 
normal. So I remember there was a conversation on Twitter where someone yeah. said we should play, and I'm like, but that wasn't what the event That's was what made for. for. There are enough events you can listen to these things, so it's it, it looks good. It looks good, but it also depends on the crowd. Mm. Like when I'm doing an electronic music event, I know there are some people I will never see there because that's not what they <laughs> want to listen to. So it depends on the crowd, honestly. Mm. It depends. Um, how you feeling about the next ten years? I feel like it's going to be amazing. Like, see, I was even telling someone that. I believe I have worked. Sometimes I just wake up and I read my EPK and I look at all the things I've done. EPK, in tell the people what EPK is. If, EPK is called an <laughs> electronic press kit. So it's basically a CV for creatives or a portfolio. Yeah, yeah. So it has everything that I have done in the past 10 years. And whenever I read it, sometimes I feel like, oh, wait, like, is this me or I'm reading about yeah. someone else? So I feel like I've laid the groundwork mm-hmm. for bigger things. Like, yeah, you're very a Coachella. No? We'll do the ultra Definitely. music and everything. Yeah. yeah. There's so, a spotlight on West Africa right now. Yes. So it is possible. Anyway, thank you so much for coming by, DJ. Thank you for um, having me. I was going to say DJ Michi. I, I was like, oh, the best DJ. <laughs> me, I mean, as Michi from, you know. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's going to be our interview. We're going to get back to the episode. I hope you enjoy the rest of it. Come on.